morning. Welcome to Orange United Methodist Church, where we are all about helping people find their place in God's story. My name is Brad Inman, and I'm one of the associate pastors here at Orange, and we are just so thankful that you chose to worship with us this morning. Uh, we are so excited uh, for the Lord's Day, so thank you again for joining us. Um, if you are here, and you are because you can hear me, um, we invite you to uh, sign the virtual pew pad uh, just so that we can uh, keep in touch with the people who uh, need to be kept in touch with <laughs> so we can reach out to those who may need a little extra care at this time. Uh, I do have some announcements of things coming up in the life of the church. First of all, uh, our women's book club is meeting this Friday evening at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, this month's book is Where the Crawdads Sing. So if you haven't started yet, uh, get reading. you got some work to do, but you do have some time uh, to finish that up or complete your reading. Uh, if you do have any questions about how to be involved with that, you can contact Pastor Corey. Uh, attention third graders, uh, we're going to be passing out our third grade Bibles, which is a tradition here at Orange. Diana thinks that she's got a list of all of our third graders and she's ready to deliver those. But just in case, if there's anyone she's missing, please go ahead and reach out to her and let her know if you have a third grader. Finally, the youth group is kind of starting phase three of our reboot here, um, and I sent out a big email this past Friday, uh, so check that out if you are a youth family. If you're a youth family and you did not receive a ginormous email from me, uh, please let me know, and if you have any questions about uh, the things that we're going to be doing this semester, please, please, please reach out to me and let me know. Uh, this time we'll continue in our worship with the call to worship. Let all who would serve the Lord draw near for worship. We would serve the Lord all the days of our lives. Then God's covenant is with us, and we shall never be forgotten. Not even at the end of our days when death silences our voices, Death has no power to match that of the Lord God of all eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our opening hymn is number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. big thank you again to our choir who continues to lead us in such awesome ways during this time. Uh, let's continue in worship with our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to move into a time of prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the ability to wake up and worship you on this day. God, every day is a privilege to worship you. But today is another opportunity to quiet our minds, quiet our hearts, put things aside, and focus on you. God, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us and the reasons you give us to worship you each and every day. We thank you for giving us sustenance, for giving us hope, for feeding our faith. We thank you for the ways that when we feel like we can't go on, you give us little reminders of your love and of your presence. God, at this time, we pray for all of those who need a little extra right now, a little extra of your patience, a little extra of your healing, a little extra of you. We particularly keep in mind Bill Christian, Gray Callahan, Lacey Gerard, Ben Kibler, Bill Blackwood, Benjamin Summers, P.H. Craig, Aiden Lang, Edward Fetter, Ava Perry, Bill Page, Dale Anderson, Paul Mann, Wilton Andrews, Savannah Wright, Fred Brooks, Crystal Dykus, Lynn Hillman, Elsie Moose, Blaine Thomas, John Harrell, Liz Moore, Cindy Gerber, Reverend Michael Hale, Helen Clark, and Terry Beecham. God, these names we lift up to you right now. And those who are not on this list but are in our hearts, God, we lift them up to you as well. Wrap them in your care, comfort them, heal them, be with them. Give them that little extra, God. And it's in your name we continue to pray as you taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please continue to worship with us with uh, hymn number 473, Lead me, Lord. I invite you now to join with me in the prayer for illumination as found 
projected upon the screen. Let us pray. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be opened. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes to us from the book of Judges, Judges chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. And Rachel Anderson is sharing with us this scripture today. This is a reading from Judges 6, 6 through 16. The Midianites made the Israelites very poor, so they cried out to the Lord for help. They cried out to the Lord because of what the Midianites had done. So he sent a prophet to Israel. The prophet said, The Lord is the God of Israel. He says, I brought you up out of Egypt. That is the land where you were slaves. I saved you from the power of the Egyptians. I saved you from all of those who were treating you badly. I drove out the Canaanites to make room for you. I gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You are now living in the land of the Amorites. Do not worship their gods, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came. He sat down under an oak tree in Ophrah. The tree belonged to Joash. He was from the family line of Abizar. Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press at Ophrah. He was the son of Joash. Gideon was threshing in a wine press to hide the wheat from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. He said, Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. Pardon me, sir, Gideon replied. You said the Lord is with us. Then why has this all happened to us? Where are the wonderful things he has done? Our people long ago told us about them. They said, Didn't the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has deserted us. He has handed us over in Midian. The Lord turned to Gideon. He said to him, You are strong. Go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I am sending you. Pardon me, sir, Gideon replied. My, but how can I possibly save Israel? My family group is the weakest tribe in Mahassah, and I am the least important fam- member of my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you. You will strike down the Midianites. You will leave no one alive. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, church. I'm Adam Seat, and I'm one of the pastors here at Orange United Methodist Church. I am so thankful that you have chosen to join us in this time of worship today. It's so important that we find these ways that we might still remain connected to one another. So I encourage you, if you're watching this on the Facebook platform, share there in the chat box with one another greetings, letting one another know that you are together. I even encourage you, as we have said before, to share this video with your friends and your family because they may be in a spot right now where they need to find that hope, hoping on. And so thank you for being a part of this today. Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, we give thanks for the way that you truly are omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. Lord, you are in all your majesty and all your power and all your glory. You are the Lord of all. And so as we gather in this time, we pray, Lord, that you might speak to us. As we give thanks for your holy word as it has been read by Rachel, Lord, may it now be made real for us as it is proclaimed. By the power of your Holy Spirit, would you transform the words that proceed from my mouth, and as they fall upon our ears and penetrate our hearts, may they be changed into the word of God that we need to hear today, as individuals and collectively as one body. Lord, we pray this in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. Back in January of this year, I attended a conference in Orlando, Florida called the Creativity and Ministry Conference. This conference was put on by an organization that incorporated Disney cast members and Disney execs into our teachings and workshops. 
so that we might be able to see how we might be as creative as possible within God's kingdom. I actually attend this, attended this same conference 11 years ago, and I found it to be such a fruitful blessing for me that a few years later, I registered and planned on taking some of the staff at the church that I was working at. However, just a few weeks before the conference was to take place, we received notice that the conference had been canceled. And so I was so disappointed. And then when they still had it the following year, I was not going back. But I thought this year I felt a special pull to go to that conference. And so I registered and was able to attend. And what an amazing timing to attend a conference calling on us to be creative in ministry in January of 2020, only two months before we would be thrust into circumstances requiring us to be as creative as possible to do ministry. And now, trying to be a faithful, lifelong learner, I'm now taking a class online called How to Lead in Crisis. Now, I've only so far gone through two of the sessions. I've watched the video and done the homework. One session was called Leading Yourself Through Crisis. And the image was used in that lesson about how the instructions that you receive from a flight attendant before you take off on your plane, that if the airbags were to fall, for you to place it first upon yourself and then for you to attend to a child that may be sitting beside you. The lesson being, you can't take care of someone else unless you can take care of yourself first. That was one that resonated for me and such an important reminder for practicing self-care in these times that before we can care for someone else, we must demonstrate that same care for ourselves. Now, in one of those two sessions that I've gone through so far, there was something that the instructor said that, I got to admit, it really hit me. He said in the video, God knew that the coronavirus was coming. I didn't, but God knew that this was coming. And even when God knew that this was coming, he still made me to be a leader in this season. He made me to be a leader in this season for such a time as this. And I am right where I belong. <laughs> I got to admit, I'm watching the video. I'm hearing him say those things. And I'm thinking to myself, me? <laughs> no way. I am certainly not equipped to lead in times like this. I know how to lead the old way, but... I certainly don't know how to lead in the age of Zoom. I mean, some of y'all know, I just had a birthday last Sunday, and I'm halfway to 98. I'm too old for this. I don't belong in these times. <laughs> maybe you, maybe you have even felt like you don't belong in these times. Maybe you have had some of those same me kind of moments. Parents who are trying to figure out how to use the technology to work from home all the same time that you're also having to monitor and supervise your students participating in virtual learning from home. <laughs> or maybe you're a teacher and have experienced teaching for years upon years and now you're having to try to figure out how to make sure that the assignments are accessible to the kids at home, not even able to understand if it's really getting through. Or maybe you're a person who is used to helping and serving others, but now you have found yourself just having to be so isolated at home. Can I go back to what I said just a few moments ago? God knew that this was coming, and he still made you to be a leader in this season. He made you to be a leader for such a time as this. Now, in the book of Judges, Gideon has what I think of as one of those me kind of moments. 
In the book of Judges, we see that there is this cycle that continues to go on and on and on, over and over again, repeating itself. It begins with the people of Israel being faithful. They are faithful to God and they are feeling comfortable and everything seems to be good. However, at some point that faithfulness begins to fall away. They begin to ignore God or even turning to other idols. And so while they began faithful, they begin to fall away. Well, then once they have fallen away, they begin to have to suffer the consequences of their actions. Those consequences many times take the form of oppression from other nations that are begin to oppress the people of Israel. But it is the consequences of their actions of falling away from God that they now are having to deal with. And so ultimately, those consequences lead them to crying out in repentance. The people of Israel recognize the ways that they have fallen and that that is the consequences uh, that they are suffering from. And so they cry out to God and repent of the ways that they have fallen. Ultimately, God then will raise up a deliverer, or as we know it in the book of Judges, a, a judge who will come and deliver them, leading them to faithful. Faithful, which then leads to falling away which then leads to consequences, which then leads to crying out in repentance, which then leads to God raising up a deliverer back to faithful. That cycle is played out over and over again in the book of Judges. And in Judges chapter 6, we see, as it begins in verse 1, it says that the sons of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, it doesn't identify in particular right here what that evil was. Was it that they were falling away by being ignoring God? Was it that they were falling away by turning to false idols? We learned that to be the case later. But here, as the people of Israel have gone from faithful to falling away, they have now cried out after suffering the consequences of the people of Midian overwhelming them. And oppressing them. And so God sends an angel. God sends an angel of the Lord to Gideon. And through that angel, it says in verses 14 and following as Rachel read, Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. I hereby commission you. I'm sending you. He responded, But sir, how can I deliver Israel? Me? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least of my family. The Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike down the Midianites, every one of them. Now, I sort of feel like sometimes Gideon gets a bad rap. Because, you know, Gideon's always seeking confirmation. Maybe you thought Gideon was known for putting Bibles in hotels everywhere. No, Gideon had nothing to do with that. But Gideon is this one that God calls to deliver his people. And Gideon's one that just says, me? I'm the smallest of the small. I'm the least of the least. And so Gideon, he wants this confirmation because he can't understand how God would call someone like him. And so Gideon asked the angel of the Lord that has told him all this stuff that's going to happen. And Gideon asked the angel to wait there while he prepares a meal. And he prepares this meal and he presents it before the angel. And as soon as he does, immediately this great fire arises and consumes the meal and it immediately is gone And so is the angel. Gideon takes that to be the sign that this truly was. A message from the Lord God Almighty. And so now Gideon knows that this was of God. And so Gideon does this act of repentance. 
He goes and follows the message that the angel had given to him, that he was to go into the village, into the community, and tear down the false idol that has been built up, the community idol. And this tearing down of the idol is a required act of repentance. And so now, following the repentance, it must be an act of deliverance. You know, the next things that... I'm sure you know the next signs that Gideon asked for. First, it was that the fleece would be on the ground of the threshing floor and that the fleece would be wet and the ground around it would be dry. And you know, God does it. And so then you know what Gideon does. He asked for another sign. Only this time for it to be the opposite. Yeah, this time, how about the floor be wet? And the fleece will be completely dry. How about that one, God? You know, I think we all can probably relate at least a little bit to Gideon. We want God to give us these signs. We want confirmation that what we feel that maybe God is calling us to, that God can provide a a reassurance. I know I can relate to that. Back when I was dealing with my call to ministry, I was struggling. Is God calling me to be a minister? All my life, I was told that I was going to be a minister just like my dad. And all my life, I had refused and said, no, not me. But finally, I felt that pull. I felt that calling. And I was struggling and battling with it. I'll never forget, Jennifer and I were at Myrtle Beach As she was preparing for final exams in law school, she and a group of others had gone to the beach to just get away from it all, to just focus on their studies, and I tagged along. And so one night, I walked out onto that beach, and as I was staring up into the stars and the moon and listening to the wind and the waves, I remember praying. And I prayed, I said to God, God, I I think you're calling me to be a minister, a pastor. But I'm not sure. If if you're calling me to be a pastor, would you have that water come up and wash over my feet? I stood there out on that beach, people walking up and down late at night, and I'm the one standing there on the shore singing as I stared into the stars in the dark of night. And soon I looked down and realized, that the the water had washed over my feet. And so I did the only logical thing, just like Gideon. I backed up and said, okay, God, this time I'm serious. Give me another sign. I said, God, this time I really mean it. If you're calling me to be a minister, once again, have that water wash over my feet. I don't know how long I stood there looking into the stars and the moon until I finally realized that the water was over my ankles. And I knew. At that point, I felt I knew. I remember walking back to the condo and speaking with Jennifer and telling her, I think, I, I think, I know that God is calling me. I think that Gideon might have had those same kind of doubts, those same kind of questions, It may not have made sense, just like it didn't make sense why God would call me. For Gideon, it may not have made sense why God would call him. But Gideon knew as God provided those signs. And so, for this act of deliverance that God was calling Gideon to do, Gideon has called for the armies to come and to gather and assemble so that they might be able to take on the Midianites, which was a formidable foe. And so 32,000 soldiers gather and assemble. But you know what? God tells them, no, no, that's too many. For if they fought, Israel would become boastful and saying, my own power has delivered me. So they send away 22,000 of them. God says, send away all who were fearful and trembling. And 22,000 leave leaving behind only 10,000. Which, 
for Gideon, that probably still didn't seem like a fair fight because the Midianite, Midianite army is described as being as numerous as locusts and their camels were without number, as numerous as the sand on the seashore. And here he is with 10,000. God still says no. That's still too much. I want you to know that when victory comes, it's not by your might. When victory comes, it's by my might through you. And so that number dwindles down once again from 10,000 to 300. Do you realize they went from 32,000 to 300 and 300 were to take on with the might and power of God the Midianite army that was massive? And sure enough, God brings them victory. God knew what was coming. And God called Gideon. He called the least of the least. Because if God only called the greatest of the great, the mightiest of the mighty, then we would think that we did things by our own might, by our own power. And through God, throughout the scriptures, we see how God continues to call on the least likely people you would ever expect. The book of Judges is full of numerous examples of God calling the last person you would have thought that he would have called upon. But then, look at who Jesus called to be his followers, his closest disciples. The last people you would have expected that God would have called. And then, if you could have predicted who would have written the majority of the, what would become known as the New Testament, I'm pretty sure Saul, a murderer of followers of Christ, I'm pretty sure Saul became Paul, would not be high on our list. It's called God does not always call the greatest of the great, the mightiest of the mighty. Because people like Gideon, because people like me, because people like you. God wants us to know it's not by our might. But God wants a servant willing to understand that it's only in our weakness, that God is made strong. God is calling you to be a deliverer to the people that he has placed you around. You are right where you belong. Maybe you feel, maybe you feel like you're out of place. Maybe you feel like you're ill-equipped and unprepared. <laughs> we all do. And that's why we surrender to the one who equips, the one who sins, the one who can do all things. May you be willing to understand how God has you right where you belong. Let us pray. God, you didn't put us into the positions that we find ourselves in right now. Because you called the greatest of the great. We're in the positions and circumstances that we're in right now. Because you know that we know. We can't do this on our own. Lord I pray. That today you might. Offer us that hope. That hope for belonging. That even though we feel so ill prepared. Even though we feel so ill equipped. That you, you are all we need. And that through you and through our circumstances, your glory will be made known. Lord, we offer these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. This week, I had an opportunity to witness something truly extraordinary. On Thursday, I was able to join with other volunteers as we helped distribute 150, box, uh, over 150 boxes of food to feed families in our community. 
in our partnership with Porch of Hillsboro. We gathered at a park and one by one cars pulled through and we put in boxes of, of dry goods, boxes of produce. We gave them fresh meat and eggs and in this, 150 families were able to be fed. That's because of your generosity. And recognize, I said families, not 150 people, 150 families. This was only made possible because the way that you have been so faithful and so generous in your gifts to the church and the way that this church is able to use those gifts to make a difference, to help people find their place in God's story, to offer hope. And so today, you can continue that movement. You can continue that through the way that you give. You can go online to orangemethodist.org backslash give, where you can make your contribution online. From your mobile device, you can text the word orange to 73256. Text the word orange to 73256. And there you'll be guided and directed to how to make your gift online. Or you can put your contribution in the mail, or you can even drop it by here at the church. Our office hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 1, someone is present. Or you can even drop it in our secure mailbox, straight out front. You barely even have to get out of your car. However, you may make your contribution. I give thanks for your faithfulness and know that the gifts that you are entrusting to us are being used to help share the hope we have in Christ. give thanks to Sherry Hanfinger and Debbie Pence for sharing that offertory with us today. And now, let us sing together, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here.
our hymn of going forth is hymn number 557, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Once again, to our choir for offering leadership in a unique and powerful way. And so, thank you for worshiping with us today. May you go forth in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, going forth in His power, answering His call, and sharing our hope. Amen.